Hi, it's Frostfire here. So after six and a half years, the Nintendo Switch recently became the third best-selling console of all time. But since the Switch OLED's release in 2021, sales have declined year on year, sparking interest in Nintendo's next-gen console. And with many credible leaks and rumors being revealed, let's take a look at everything we know about the Switch 2. So in terms of design and features, in July 2023, VGC reported that dev kits for the new console are already with partner studios. With some sources citing some returning features, these include the same portability as its predecessor and that it will feature a cartridge slot for physical games. The Switch 2, however, doesn't look like it will be sporting an OLED screen, a fan favorite on the current gen Switch. On August the 2nd, 23, Nate the Hate revealed that the console is likely to feature an 8-inch LCD screen, which is a big upgrade compared to the 6.2-inch on the current standard model, and moderate upgrade compared to the 7-inch on the OLED version. VGC sources also suggested LCD in order to bring down costs. This is a wise move from Nintendo, especially with high costs expected for inbuilt storage. The same insider suggesting a significant bump in internal storage up to a maximum of 512 gigabytes. A huge upgrade over the 32 gigabytes on the standard and 64 on the OLED model. In May 2023, a patent was filed suggesting revamped Joy-Cons. The patent demonstrates a joystick that uses magnetic fields rather than physical contacts, bearing similarity to Hall Effect joysticks on the stylish Nixie controllers. Its main goal, to eliminate drift from frustrated Joy-Con consumers. So there's been some indication we could see a nostalgic return to the colored buttons. The first with the remake of Super Mario RPG clearly showing the retro colors. And second with another remake of Paper Mario showing the red A button. Falcom also revealed Trails Through Daybreak showing a red A and blue X along with the ZL button so you know it's a port for Nintendo. And finally Fashion Dreamer which showed all the colored buttons. Soldier Delta claimed on Discord on October 6 the existence of AR features. Now throughout Nintendo's history, they've been known to try something different with most of their consoles. A recent era poster named Angie received info from an Atlas Insider that there is a new camera function with the Switch 2, not sure if it's VR. Nintendo's 3DS featured three different cameras which allowed for AR support. The feature was dropped for the Switch but could be coming back for the Switch 2. Nintendo recently filed a dual screen patent for a new gaming device. The device can also be split into two and operated independently. Keeping in mind Nintendo patents don't always become released products. Prior to the Switch announcement, a patent was filed for a gaming handheld which never actually came to fruition. The design doesn't feel like an gen switch but something very different for 3ds enthusiasts i hope nintendo can take the win from the switch and give us something similar with better graphic fidelity and more power which brings us on to performance and hardware. A NVIDIA leak in March 2022 suggested ray tracing support, with September 23 rumors suggesting ray reconstruction. Bundled in NVIDIA's latest DLSS 3.5, it's essentially ray tracing with AI. The benefits of 3.5 include reduced ghosting, improved dynamic lighting, and sharper reflections even while moving. However, the main benefit from Nintendo's perspective is that a game's frames can be rendered at 7 20p or 1080p and then upscale to 4k using less power. Nintendo making a smart strategic decision to partner with Nvidia. Now as time progresses it appears more and more likely that we'll see a custom Tegra 239 system on chip along with an 8 core CPU and an ampere based GPU with Lovelace features. NVIDIA also looking likely to use a 128-bit interface. Now memory bandwidth is crucial for a mobile gaming machine and it's the primary performance bottleneck in the current gen Switch. With this in mind, we should see maximum bandwidth of 102 gigabytes for the Switch 2. But of course, Nintendo being Nintendo, they may choose to downclock that for better efficiency. Now on to models and pricing. The current gen Switch has plenty of models to choose from and price points to consider. And looking forward to the Switch 2, inflation and improved specs are likely to drive the prices higher. Soldier Delta has claimed on Discord on October 6th that the Switch 2 will have two SKUs. A digital model that will retail at $399 USD and a standard edition that will be $449 USD. This is in line with where the market is going, with companies like Microsoft and Sony already adopting a similar strategy with their disc versus digital editions. With two variations for initial rollout, 
will Nintendo still release light and OLED models? It certainly seems less likely, as they would end up with six different SKUs come the end of the Switch 2's life cycle. So what's a likely release date for the Switch 2? Recent court documents as part of the Activision Blizzard acquisition revealed that Nintendo briefed Activision on the Switch 2 in late 2022. And even though some evidence was redacted, it did mention next-gen Switch. In May 2023, Nintendo put a stop to rumours about its new hardware coming anytime soon, declaring the Switch successor wouldn't be released until April 2024 at the earliest. Further claims from Soldier Delta on October 6th were that Nintendo do have a target release date for the 24th of September and a fallback date of November 3rd in case something goes wrong. Reed Pop's head of games B2B, Christopher Dring, told VGC that a 2024 release would fit with Nintendo's historical trend of launching hardware mid-cycle compared to the PlayStation and Xbox. Nintendo's president, Shunturo Furukawa, confirmed that Nintendo will support the current-gen Switch until at least March 2025. This is encouraging given the likely 2024 release for the Switch 2. Dr. Sir Toto told VGC, looking at Nintendo's financials, it seems clear that it's time for a new piece of hardware in 2024. Hardware is already projected to fall 16.5% year on year in the current fiscal, while the minus for software is expected to hit 15.9%. This graph clearly shows Nintendo's reliance on the Switch OLED for sales late in the current gen's life cycle. One possible reason is the increasing popularity of handheld gaming PCs, like the Steam Deck, Asus Rock, ROG Alley, Lenovo Legion Go, and the new Steam Deck OLED. The ROG Alley has 1080p resolution, 120Hz refresh, and VRR support. The Legion Go has an 8.8 inch screen, 1600p resolution, and 144Hz refresh. And the Steam Deck OLED has a 7.4 inch screen and a 90Hz refresh. But these are PC handhelds. What about PlayStation and Xbox? As part of the Activision Blizzard acquisition, Schnackenberg explained that the Switch 2 is close to Gen 8 platforms in terms of performance, and that Activision could make something compelling given its previous offerings on PS4 and Xbox One. For Nintendo's sake, I hope we see something better, especially if they're to get seven years out of the Switch 2. During Gamescom 2023, Eurogamer reported that the Switch 2 was being demoed behind closed doors, showing a souped-up version of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Nate the Hate suggesting the demo ran at 4K 60fps, along with instant load times, compared to 30 seconds load times on the current gen switch. The Matrix demo was also rumoured, looking the same as on next gen consoles, but with supposedly better ray tracing. However, let's keep in mind it most likely wasn't running on native hardware, but on a PC dev kit with similar specs. Both these demos indicate Nintendo wants game developers to start getting ready for its next gen console in 2024. So how does Nintendo ensure a smooth transition? In May 2022, Nintendo president Furukawa said, looking back on past experiences of generational change, such as the change from the Wii and Nintendo DS eras, we recognize that one of our tasks is ensuring the transition to future generations of hardware is as smooth as possible. Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser said, the Nintendo account will allow us to communicate with our players if and when we make a transition to a new platform. In October we got three bundles, a standard Switch Sports for Europe, a standard Mario Kart 8 and a light Animal Crossing in two colours. In November we got two OLED bundles, one for Smash Brothers Ultimate and the other for Mario Kart 8. Nintendo looking to offload as much console stock as possible for Christmas sales and to start making way for the Switch 2. So what games will we see at launch? Whether it's Mario Odyssey 2 or another 3D Mario, I would be shocked if Nintendo dared launch without a AAA Mario title, especially given the recent success of Super Mario Wonder and its creative new art direction. So after Tears of the Kingdom's huge success, most fans would jump at the opportunity to experience Hyrule once again with better frame rate and fidelity. And will we see a new Mario Kart? Given Mario Kart 8 has spanned nearly 10 years, and with the booster DLC, now offers 96 courses and nearly 50 playable characters. Its success creates a problem for its successor, with even bigger expectations on new gimmicks, favorite courses, and fresh characters. And if they are working on Mario Kart X, let's hope we see some influence from Wonder. And what about Metroid Prime 4?
So after primary mastered success, Prime 4's development with one studio must be going well. And on September 2nd, Zippo suggested the game will release in the summer of next year, which will make it the last major title for the Switch. Metroid Prime 4 may be a cross-gen title or release on the Switch and have backwards compatibility with the Switch 2. So we can't finish this video without mentioning this. And Nintendo do have a great track record with backwards compatibility on the Game Boys, DS, 3DS, GameCube, Wii and Wii U. Current rumours say the standard model with a cartridge slot will be backwards compatible. It's also suggested the digital only version will not be, even for games acquired digitally from the Nintendo eShop. If true, this could anger gamers with a large digital library. But considering Nintendo's focus on the Nintendo account, asking gamers to repurchase purchase on the Switch 2 certainly seems a stretch. Finally, with any leaks and rumours, please take everything discussed here with a healthy dose of scepticism, as nothing has been announced or confirmed by Nintendo. Thanks for watching. Appreciate any feedback in the comments. Until next time.